Philippe, we've just had the news that the game will be taking place at Dens Park. What's your initial reaction to that? That uh, the people who decided that are sure that there will be a game tomorrow. So that's a very positive thing. Are there no further concerns from you? We've, we've seen, you know, in the, the last game that it was given to go ahead at 11 o'clock and then in a later pitch inspection. No, I'm not the guy from the half full glass or the empty glass. So I think everybody knows and, and everybody knew also about taking this uh, decision, how it's now processed, how it was prepared, that uh, the people who decided to play tomorrow at Dance Park, it's 200% sure we're going to play there. So uh, they know the weather forecast probably and, uh, and they're certain that, uh, that the pitch will cope with that. So it's good. It's good for us also to know where we, go, where we, where we will play, how we can uh, uh, prepare that. And uh, it's now go ahead for this game. I think everybody, people from Dundee, people from Rangers, are happy that finally we can play this game. Yeah, is it quite good to be able to put that whole saga behind you in full focus now on the game? Yeah, of course, because we don't have anything to say or to do with that. Uh, we can only focus on, on ourselves and on our football. So we had some work to do with that also after the weekend, of course, where we were not happy. How we played, uh, how we conceded goals, how we missed also a few really good chances and, and because of that, that we lost points. So all the focus has been on that. What's the reaction been like from the players following the weekend and you know, are you convinced that you'll get that reaction you're looking for tomorrow night? Yeah, um, they were very disappointed in themselves. They were, and that's a positive thing, they understood. They went to the fans also. I think it's a big step forward. In the past, they just stepped inside. It's it stayed together in that way, and that's a very important point for my side also, that it stays like that. Also in the disappointment that you stay together, and uh, yeah, they were they were down after the game about about the performance. We had the next day, uh, yeah, I had some clear words after the game, and the next day we made a good debriefing about what went wrong individually, collectively, and how we can make it better again. It's, uh, in French they say, accident de parcours, uh, of day, I think you say in English. We can call it like that. It's the first time in six months that I see my team like that. So I was disappointed also about that. But I think every manager has these moments, even with teams that win amazing things. Uh, I've been watching now this series about the triple of Man City of last year and I saw quite a few of those moments <laughs> in this doc in this docu doesn't mean that I want to see it back uh, on Wednesday of course but it's part of the game it's not something that you want not the players not the manager not the fans nobody but the most important thing is how you react after that and I have a good feeling around that so that I will see the real phase of my team again tomorrow. Philippe, you said it's an off day but if you look at your recent results, drop points at home to Motherwell, drop points at yeah, home to Celtic and Ross County, okay. is that a concern at this stage of the no, season? No, because Motherwell was a freak accident that could have been a game that you win 6-1. We had enough chances there and there was an unlucky day. Celtic game, it's a big game. We didn't start well, we talked about that, but we had a great reaction and we played a really good second half and I think at the end that the draw is deserved because each team had one half, totally. We had totally the second half and we had the last chance also to win that game. Um, but this one was a, was a bad one, that's true. So you need to react and, uh, and show better quality. Are you someone then that uh, when players aren't performing to the levels that you expect, I mean, you've changed your team before just on squad rotation, but were players' positions at risk as a result of that performance? Mm. Uh, at risk is, is such a negative word. Eh? Um, of course, I can change things. And it's, it's always looking what is the best team for that moment and also with uh, 
with the games to come. So that's something that fans not always understand because they always want to play with the best at that moment. But if you play with the best who comes out of injury, for example, and he plays three games in a row, you know the second game you get less and the last game you don't get anything anymore at one moment. So we need to take in account all those things, the, the physical ability of the players. And that's been the, the most difficult thing last couple of months that we had so many players out, now coming back also out of injury. But you see uh, players coming back out of injury that the first time it's really good. Second time it can be all already a little bit less because they're less fresh and they need to find this rhythm again. That takes time also. So we need to take all these things in account to every time pick the, the best starting team and also players coming in with freshness to win games. Do you have we any players returning? Mohamed, Ridvan? No, uh, Ridvan not returning and Mohamed not. Uh, I hope to have him back uh, for the, the cup semi-final, but he will not be ready uh, for tomorrow. And Leon Balligan was sick last couple of days, so he's still not uh, totally fit. Philippe, how is, is Redvan? Is he any closer to, to being back on the pitch? Yeah, he's closer day by day, but uh, yeah, those are the frustrating things of this season also, eh? that you have uh, Abda going to national team, getting an injury there and being uh, almost three months out. And with Redvan, the same thing, not in an amount of time, but we lose him already three, four weeks now with a severe injury. So um, those are frustrating things, but it's about others then to, to do the job and, uh, and to take the points like that. You conceded maybe more chances than we've been used to seeing your team concede uh, away in Dingwall. Do you think mm -hmm. that was just a, c a case of it being an off day? Yeah, yeah, but it had to do with structure, organization. It had to do with so much will to, to attack and to make the difference that we forget to do our basics. So we talked about that. We didn't do our basics anymore. Uh, we didn't show our structure, what's been our strong point all season. And because of that, we were also the team who conceded the least goals, although we played attacking football. So, um, yeah, sometimes you need a knock on your head to, uh, to remind you again uh, what you need to do to be strong and not only to think about the fine details, but uh, to, to stay in your foundation. And it was with good will, with good intention, but we lost our structure in that way. And like this, we conceded, uh, yeah, goals were for sure avoidable. Philip, uh, Jack Butland was just in speaking to us and he said he's looking at the season starts again now, six games. Uh, is that important for you? Is that the way you're looking at it? Six games, if you win them all, it's all in your I hope eight, but I only look at one game, Dundee, like we've been doing all season. And I hope Jack will do that also, like the rest of the team. Because the moment you start to think about six or eight or uh, four weeks to go or five weeks to go and then it's holiday or then you become in the shit. That's the worst things you can do. Sorry to you that I, <laughs> that I use that word. Uh, I'm, too <laughs> I'm too familiar with you guys now. <laughs> no, that's the baddest thing you can do is, is, is to look and it's the same with three months ago. It just came my game going full. It's about that. That's the way they did it and that's the way they are in this situation now to be fighting for still a lot of things. So that's what I expect from tomorrow with all squads, every second of the game to go full with all their energy and not to think about what's going on a few days after. That's for afterwards. Did that result do anything for the players' belief? Have you had to work hard to reinstall it? I don't think so. If that's the case, then you're not at your place at Rangers. If you lose your belief with one bad performance or losing points, then you're not ready for that to, to fight for trophies, to, to, try, uh, to, to fight for, uh, for titles. Because it's just part of the journey. There's not one team in the world who wins titles by every game being the best and we were better. Eh? We had more chances. We could have won the game, but every game to be that everybody was afterwards, whew, 
this team was really good. Doesn't happen. Not one season, not one team in the world. So what are the good teams? The teams who make faults and they react directly and they don't lose belief. So that's part of being a, a winner and a successful player. And it's that kind of players that, that we need here in the building to, to achieve what we want to achieve altogether. Is this a test of your player's character now? It's, it's an interesting one again. So I will get to know the team again better to make the right decisions towards next season. It doesn't mean that it's only a decision about, about tomorrow or something. It will always be a decision after uh, the, the seven, eight months together. But these are important moments also to show as a player I'm here, of course. Your captain seems to take a lot of criticism of the back of defeats when it was the same uh, on the weekend. Is that a little unfair to, to single that's, out one That's player? part of being captain. And I've been in that position also in the past. So uh, as captain, you're a symbol of the club. And when things go, go well, you're the main man and you get all the praise and all the spotlights. And when things are not well, and in this time and age, it's different than before because uh, it's every three days or heaven or hell. So then you get more stick. That's part of the job. And Tav is ready for that also. It's not his first experience in that way. And he get also a lot of praise this season also. What he deserved also. What he's been doing. Was he good on Sunday? No. He was also the first one to recognize that. But there was not really one on the pitch who was really good. And they know. And they understand. And they want to react now. Philippe, just for clarity, are you saying there in the last few games of the season that the players need to show to you that they deserve to be here next it's, season? No, uh, don't take it so literally, but that's always the part of the story that after a season, a decision is made, what is the group for next season? That's always part of the story in every team in the world. That I just want to say. It's not that there is an exam now, the next six weeks, but it's always a part of, if you want to grow, if you want to be successful, you need to make decisions at the end of the season. So of course, it's, it's important to perform. But it's in every, every, every team in the world the same. Philippe, uh, two questions. Very quick one. First on Red Van Yilma. Sorry to push you again on it. Do you expect him back any time soon? Or is it going to be a season kind of ending? No, no, no. He, he will come back. But it's difficult for me to say if it's, uh, if it's in a few days or in two weeks. But I don't think... No, I'm sure it's not going to be... A, a long, long term anymore. He's on the pitch now, training individually. He's taking steps, but he's not training with the, with the squad yet. My second question was, and I'll try to articulate this properly, on the structure of the team on Sunday, I haven't seen Rangers as open. And as yes, as of a, course. A That's what I've been talking about. Yeah. yeah, so I was going to ask you, do you think uh, as an individual or a collective that you've had to work on to make sure that doesn't happen again? Yeah, of course, and it had a lot to do with communication also. What we've been really strong on last couple of months, the communication together, and, and that was not the case during this game. And because of this, our structure was also less than before. So everybody understands. It's been a, a really strong point that our structure was there all season. And what was less the case in the beginning of the season and because of that you had also games like we had now. So it was a little bit uh, a throwback to those times, what I totally don't want to see because it's against all my principles in football. So yes, the, the team understands and in their eagerness to score goals, they forget their basics. So we need to focus on our basics again. What do you expect from Dundee now that they've got their top six place assured? Yeah, that they, they have a free ride tomorrow. That they will feel it like that also. Nothing to lose, they, they will go full to win this game. It's a, it's a different situation than if we would have played one week ago, where the pressure was on. So it's a different situation, but yeah. That's Dundee's situation. My situation is that... I'm focused on my team, what they need to do. But in that way, the phase of Dundee and how they approach the game will be, will be different. 
Philippe Samlam has, has been flying on loan. I think it's six goals now in his last six games. Is he someone that you've spoken to and is in your plans for next season? Uh, no, I didn't speak with him, but we will make this evaluation, like I said also about all the rest, after the season. And to see how everybody performed in, uh, in this period. And not only me, that's together with uh, the people of the board to make the right decisions to make a really strong squad and uh, even a better squad next season.